Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this video, we will take a look at the editor, the asset store and the underlying modi tool, which is actually one of the most challenging parts of the game, and I will explain in a minute why. But also the little things we have been working on, bugs and optimizations and this sort of thing. Uh, we will also talk about the release this year, right? And, you know, future, future, future plans for the game, and what else we plan to do under the release. This part of the video is what we will see now in the future more, where each video uh, talks specifically or talks in detail about a certain feature of the game. In this case, I'd like to start with a start in the modding tool, because this has been a very difficult part of the game and of our project. Um, we've been working on it uh, for quite a lot, and you can see the power of it, right? So you, you will see now uh, some some footage. I will show you how we can even change later on some obstacles in the game. You know, like uh, different, let's say maybe a fridge or um, a tree, and then also characters and, and animations. And this is uh, quite a bit. So for you know, first as you, as we can see, it's, it feels a bit like Sims. Uh, where you can very easily uh, construct your your, uh, your houses, you can construct very easily your rooms, and you can do the same, or you do the same for the dungeons, right? So the dungeons basically con um, consist also of rooms, and you then uh, design those rooms with this tool, and it's actually very powerful uh, because this allows us to, you know, create very interesting, uh, I think, uh, designs that you are you know, more, more familiar, let's say, from. Um, from Path, of Ex uh, from Path of Exile or from Diablo, where you have this very interesting dungeon, right? So this applies to both, you know, the surface and then as well the underground. And the tool is actually quite impressive, you know. It's it's um, it is really supposed to help you to design it. So this more specifically here, and you can see the second that 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 a button is pressed in in the bottom, uh, sorry, in the top right corner. This is the template mode where we, where you can very easily create these kind of templates. And so this actually allows you to create those templates outside of, let's say, uh, the rest of the game, you know. You can, of course, do the, do, do the same on basic terrain. You can just very easily, you know, kind of, let's say, create something that you actually need to, need to do. Of course, it then costs, you know, some resources. So you can see sometimes, even in this video in the top right corner, and this is, I think it's an older version of the template mode, where it actually shows, like, the resource costs. And of course, this makes no sense, right? If you are in a template mode and you are supposed to create templates, uh, which actually are like re reusable, uh, this is not supposed to appear, but you know, this has been fixed in the meantime. And the template mode is very special because, and I will show this like in a minute, where you can really create something that is a template, as we call it uh, so far, and then Put a price tag on it. You can say, okay, I want to sell it like for maybe ten cents for one dollar, or maybe just give it for free. And if you ever played a game like Spore, and this is where the original idea is coming from, because when I was re re replaying Spore uh, a few years ago, I noticed that Spore has a lot of assets in it, right? Like, like lots of content based on the editor, the in-game editor of Spore. And I'm actually missing this kind of editor feature in in, in many games nowadays. So for instance, in a, in a game like, uh, let's say, like Fortnite or even in a game like many Steam games, you can create mods, but it's actually quite complicated. You have to go through a complicated modding system, even like in Minecraft, right? And so it takes a while to get accustomed to it, and which of course, the, most players really puts off. And in a game like Sport, it was so cool to create creatures and everything on the fly. And it's actually what I enjoy, to have kind of like an editor inside the game, where you can just very easily, you know, go there. It's something that I was really missing in the game The Sims, where it's, you know, if, so first off, in Sims, it's actually impossible to mod the game unless you want to hack it, <laughs> um, which, you know, EA and... <laughs> So this is a different topic, but um, the uh, the general idea of this of this editor is first to kind of like allow the um, the average player who has no tech experience whatsoever um, to really you know create these like interesting things and then put a price tag on it or maybe just give it a, a for free to I don't know to his friends or like whoever wants and I think this is really cool and you know this is hopefully interesting for everybody you know. Because imagine you are playing the game and you are, let's say, you are playing a certain faction. Let's say you play the Naga and the, and, and the Naga are the uh, jungle people. 
living, uh, you know, like, like kind of like the, the Mayas and the Aztecs. And then you really are, are looking for assets or like, let's say creations for multiplayers or for a specific theme, right? For, let's say the jungle theme. Duh, obviously that there should have been, you know, like maybe 100,000 different creations. And this may have been, uh, this is maybe better a, a, uh, or maybe that they are more creative than you are. And then you just, you know, like within seconds, you then just kind of like, you know, then, uh, then, then download uh, their creations. This is what we are working on. So you can see here, for instance, you know, on the templates, you can see uh, um, um, former creations here by, 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 by this user specifically. And then he, she is just picking up, you know, her former creations and then, you know, creating this stuff so this is actually very easy to do there's, there's of course a bit of effort so this whole store thing is actually kind of a thing that i need to show um like in a second but but you can see i kind of like the power of it right so you you, you can very like very easy kind of like a template you know copy and paste template uh create these things and not just that because let's so let's say you have you create like a defense tower for you specifically that you always want to like reuse and you can just do it you, you just pay then resources when you then place it and this is the small difference. So this, of course, then raises the question, what if you want to give it to someone else? So, so, the, so the other person, like, or like before you do it, you, you actually have to go through the asset store. So we are currently changing it so that you, that you, so that you actually can create these uh, assets directly from the template mode. But here, for instance, um, someone is picking, you know, the, then the file and then, then sets, sets setting up the pictures maybe adding some description and then basically just deciding you know like whether there should actually be a price tag on it which we also have these kind of like small icons there and you know the categories which is something that you know from let's say uh, from the fortnite um, store or um, f or from the fortnite modes or you know this from you know steam workshop it's actually it, it's just we are just trying to be a bit faster with this or let's say or a bit easier to use so it's a bit of effort here right and you then just just just, just set this up and then you make the changes that does that you want and then it's actually part of the of the asset store so that well and this is i will show this like uh, pretty soon hopefully uh, so that someone else can just you know um can activate it or just download it and then it's actually of course fairly easy to use right and the idea is behind is really as i mentioned earlier is like when you like what you think about the sims or, or when you think about uh games explore in particular because again it's hopefully you know easy to use and there are basically two different ways on how we do it i will show you in a second uh, or like at, um, towards the end of the section the other part and the first part is as you can see here um then he is uh, picking up some stuff. There's of course in all different categories, and then uh, it has been, and it's, it's basically then selecting as, as certain assets, so that it actually then be, becomes part of his own, you know, template collection, and then he can use it, you know, in the way he wants. And as you can see here, you have a screenshot of this asset, and you can just, you know, and, and so for, and for as long as this is your asset, you of course you can edit. So let's say you want to add, um, so you want to change, you know, some, I don't know, some pictures or like, or like whatever. Uh, this is of course a bit of effort um, that you have to do, but you know, as you can see, this is like fairly simple. There's actually no, this is no, no biggie. <laughs> this is actually kind of like simple to do. Um, now the questions of course, and also, so, so like when you are done with your own asset, what if, and this is actually now the second case, what if you are a different user? So here the someone actually logged in as a different user. You basically just subscribe to the asset. So it's actually fairly easy uh, to subscribe to it. And based on the sub sub subscription, um, you ha it's, it's actually then part of your selection. And then you can, you know, do some stuff with it. And then you can, let's say, so here, I think he, here the, uh, the, the tester the, the decided to use it in his own template mode, right? As you can see here. So just to showcase that, you know, you have then this asset in your own selection, although, you know, it was technically not by you. Okay, so now this, of course, now, now raises the question. So first off, you know, you uh, that it was stuff that was created like within the game. So what if you want to, since the game is actually like you know, full 3D, like what if you want to, let's say, uh, change here, like, a, you know, like different assets, like obstacles. So this is actually an another tool, as you can see in the top left corner, we call it like the Nemoid modding tool, which is basically an, a, a Unity editor. I said this was uh, we 
we can basically came to the conclusion that this is actually the, the best choice. So you can actually use the normal Unity editor for, let's say, all kind of asset changes. I find this to be the most efficient way and actually, you know, the easiest because if you ever, you know, used Unity before, um, this is very powerful. And since we're using then also Unity for our own engine, this is actually pretty fine. But what happens is actually, and so for instance, in this case, you know, he's actually a very complex character where this is actually where it's actually like important. Where, for instance, you know, you are changing, I don't know, you are changing like some animation parts. You want to prepare the, the 3D character for the game. So if you ever like, both worked with 3D tools before, or like 3D characters in the game, you kind of know the drill. This is actually not special. And of course, but this of course then raises the question, Okay, if you make these changes, like with, let's, let's say within the editor, and you actually really allow these kind of assets to be part of the game, right? How to get these assets as uh, into our asset store? This is of course the tricky part. So this is actually what what we do and what we and what we will see towards the end. So this is kind of like the second mode. So the first mode, mode that we saw earlier was the template mode, where you can within the game, you know, you you you, you will kind of like create your own stuff. But if you want to go deeper. And you want to kind of like add your own 3D creations. You want to add you know, certain assets uh, to the game that are really not part of the game yet. Um, then, of course, you have to go through this tool. So first, you go through the Nimoid modding tool, where you kind of like make your adjustments. You have to, uh, app, you know, you have to be conformed with the format. There are certain formats, you know, like regarding animations, also like you know, like regarding coding. You know, in case you want to change the game. Um, later on into, I don't know, an RTS, so you want to change the camera perspective and so on. Um, I, I will show this maybe in a few months, you know, how to do this, because we are still working on this. But, you know, in this case, so let's say you want to have like a new new playable character. And this is, by the way, this, this is actually a playable character here. This is actually a player character. Um, then you kind of like make your preparations, you you apply to it, and then well, you are then using our commit system. So we actually have like a full system where you... Uh, make your changes, let's say you make your changes to the database where you kind of adjust some values of the game, right? So let's say you want to change the attack values of, of some enemies, you want to change know, the money system, or like whatever you want to do for your particular mod, then there's actually a, there's actually a set of buttons or like a set, uh, um, you know, like as you can see on the right corner uh, or, or on the right side, where you can make changes, right? So, so you then say, okay, like my mod this is the name of my mod. I want to change, you know. Uh, so you have different versions. You, uh, you, and and then you basically just commit it then to our backend system. And uh, this is actually like an, even an older version. That's actually by now like a newer version where you can even you know, set even more values. And what you saw earlier, like with the asset store, is basically what you can also do now, like in like in this version. Where, like in the modding tool, you then also set, you know, the price, you set the descriptions, you set the categories. It is just, you know, let's say the more technical, deeper level of the game. And of course, you, you then communicate with, like, with our servers because, of course, the asset store itself is, you know, on our server side and like in the Google Cloud. And then you just, you know, do this kind of that operation to edit there. And it actually makes sense, like if you really want to, let's say, replace the whole game with uh, furries, <laughs> for example, or I don't know, like with cats or you. So, and you want to change, let's say, or you, or you want to alter the mechanics or you want to alter uh, certain values, then you really go, because the tool can go deeper and can go deeper. And this is really important for us, by the way, because we are actually using the same system. So it's not just like an additional thing. We are literally using this type of system for ourselves. So, which means that the whole game is technically a vanilla mod to the whole game. And you, it, like if you, like if you, and it's kind of like like all the changes that you're making are basically coming always on top of the vanilla. So if you make, you can actually like re replace everything if you want. But of course, you're always altering vanilla, like, as, um, as we all know, like from other games. And this is the idea behind it. This is where we, this was definitely some effort. Yeah. I wanted to share this part with you because you know, like when you show these kind of like uh, nice features, and we will do you know like proper videos about single features pretty soon. Um, I wanted to share with you, like with you what, what what we actually are working on on a, on a daily basis. Most of us, it's really gameplay bug fixing, and the fun thing is of of course it it kind of also shows you know parts of the game that actually maybe not so obvious. I'm, I think that this is even 
it's not going to be a dungeon test. There's, there's something is, is a bit off. Um, yeah, so the past month, so what I actually really plan to do is I actually plan to uh, show a demo at the past Steam Next Fest. So we will be part of the next uh, Steam Next Fest in, I think, June. I don't remember. But um, yeah, we didn't make it. Or I changed it, in, or I changed it like really, in, um, like almost I think three days before the Steam Next Fest. Fortunately, Steam was kind of then to us uh, to kind of like allow us to do <laughs> to do the next Steam Fest, largely because for like tech reasons, right? Because we it 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 really takes a while to add not only you know the the the, the huge amount of assets uh, to our games since our game is generated, you literally have to use the modding system. Uh, to add stuff, and since I mentioned earlier, we actually we've been working hard on the modding, so you can imagine what then happened, right? We were actually not able to add assets to the game for quite a while uh, because I didn't want to sacrifice time. And then you know, if we change some stuff or change the format, and uh, then the content would be lost, and then we have to go back again and, and like report, uh, like uh, re-import it. Um, but this is what we do. We are currently optimizing the game. We are still making like you know, minor changes to the UI. I'm, I think I'm not, not I'm not showing in this dev log. Um, so much of the new UI, but which I will do pretty soon. I will actually explain uh, what you do with the factions and you know, how those different tokens actually work in a game that you can earn and the story tree system, which is actually a bit more innovative. But yeah, yeah, as you can imagine, we are actually like, definitely doing a lot here and you know testing the game. And this takes a while, so you can imagine that the game has many small um, game mechanics, right? And they now, now because you know the um, the assets coming into the game and the, and the biomes look better like every day because of those you know extra assets. Um, it you know we are then of course you know bug fixing a lot of stuff, improving some stuff, and there are some quite some of the bugs are actually quite hilarious um, um, and like really <laughs> and really ugly. But I hope that you know by showing you all the, um, these videos, though, uh, you I hope it's it's actually cool enough and interesting enough to see the scale, let's say, uh, of what you know the amount of assets and the amount of items we have in the game, and 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 how many of the stuff it actually is is um, is animated. So yeah, and this of course for a small team like ours. Um, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a challenge, right, to do this like in full CD. I found this to be like easy, like easier in 2D or like pixel art, really, because you know it's like really less, ex as less ex expensive. Um, but in 3D, of course, it's like a whole workflow. So I hope you're enjoying these kind of things. Oh yeah, here for instance, like the shooting bug. This was this was really cool. <laughs> this actually now is, of course, now it looks so you know, much better. It also plays better because some of these videos are also a bit old, a few months. But this is actually this was actually why I, I didn't want to. Uh, do the Steam Next Fest, and uh, to you know to to uh, to buy our team like more time. I will talk about the worker system by the way, and like another time, because um, like if I, th I think this actually may require uh, an explanation. I don't know what what the, the developer he was testing, but this is you know as I mentioned earlier, this is how, this is usually how we talk about these things. So developers like when they are done with something or like when they discover a bug, this is how they show it and uh, share it with the team um, because it's usually you know quite efficient to talk to them. Or because oftentimes you also see something that maybe then the the other um, developer did, did not even discover and then you saw it like in the video and it's actually really um, effective. Multiplayer bugs. Uh, these are really interesting. <laughs> so the game is really, of course, multiplayer. I mean, we will see like at the game's release, you know, how how stable multiplayer is. Um, but of course, we also test multiplayer and you know spend a lot of time on it. And um, this actually has many implications for then for the game, right? So I, I mean, I think that the development could could have been much much cheaper and much easier <laughs> if it was not for multiplayer. But um, yeah, so as you can see, I think some of these videos are really old. But as you can see, you know, I think for multiplayer, is, is it's always interesting to uh, like when you compare it, you know, them with a the client. And yeah, we like so. And be, before you ask, there's like a whole server system, so you can actually, um, you know, like the hosting uh, is actually then quite simple. Maybe I should do like a video about it before I say something wrong. Um, because we are making changes, but I will do a, vi a video about specifically about um, multiplayer, I think. And the idea is really that you can actually really invite, you know, your friends. You can actually become friends with people, and then you can just invite them. So I think if you have ever played a game where you can maybe invite people 
um, to your servers, then it's actually pretty, pretty cool and nice to use. And plus, we of course, we also have like, you know, public servers. So if you want actually to host your own servers, I mean, it's not a problem. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. And as you can see, it's right, so like for a voxel-based game, this is like always a bit of a challenge. It's not that easy, actually, compared to, let's say, like a normal uh, game. So let's see how the performance will be uh, with the servers. Well, I think this is not even like really multiplayer related here. I just, I don't know why, like why I added it. Well, I think this is like a real, so, so this is the kind of voxel bugs um, that, that we are um, tackling. Because we, of course, we, we made so many changes to the system that you know, sometimes we like, discover some really nasty stuff that is actually, like even sometimes really difficult to like report because maybe it's some, I don't know, some generation issue. Oh, here's of course the, the dungeon. And then, I don't know, oh, this is like, you know, testing some NPCs. It's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, PvP, PvE plays a really big role in our game. It's, it's it's not visible here, but you can like if you if you really are into um, peaceful gameplay, then of course you can also you know, turn off the enemies, or you can just make them peaceful, uh, so they are then uh, then also less aggressive. This is something that I you know I enjoy about you know Minecraft because I know that some people really like it. I think that this is like a, this, um, this was a bug a um, couple of weeks ago, where I think it really went through the NPC. This was like a really a box collider problem, by the way. <laughs> this was like quite hilarious. Uh, I don't remember what kind of bug this was, but it's definitely, I, yeah, I'm not getting it. But I hope you see. Um, oh yeah, I mean, it's like, don't be surprised. These kind of like things that you saw like on the left side is actually kind of like, you know, cheat functions for the developers to uh, spawn faster. Yeah, this is what we work. But I hope you, these videos also show you, you know, how the game looks. And you can see uh, what I actually still like is like <laughs> how much actually pixel art sometimes it's still in the game. Just, you know, here and there. I think this is not in the game anymore. I, I removed it myself, but, you know, it's definitely uh, a bit of a bit of stuff going on. Yeah. The game changed. Okay, um, yeah, what else to say? Well, the future plans and the release and, you know, Steam Next. But so, so far, the idea is to release the game during summer, right? And to be an early access game. And then we hopefully will see how you guys react to it. <laughs> um, no, seriously, um, the plans for the next months are really that we will now, you know, uh, we will now do our marketing campaign. We will actually then show the game now then once again because they get the game changed now quite a bit. I think it's now about time to share it more with the public. Um, yeah, and then of course, of course, also as we explained then the mechanics, I will do like specific dev logs about certain mechanics until the game's release. And uh, we will see how this goes. So the idea for the for the game's release is really to, to go um, early access and then um, really wait for feedback. Um, for as long as as needed really because the game is actually so extensive i hope that um, over time maybe after one year the game will be cool enough to you so that you know what we actually uh, hope this the this, this state could be it will be then at that time available um what i think uh, when it comes to stuff you know like the asset store and when it comes to uh, let's say different platforms what i can say is that of course we the, the asset store will be available at as well at games release i we since we are using it like generally like ourselves we may tweak it or we maybe we will like disable certain features you know like maybe like the paid content stuff in, in case we feel that this is kind of like abuse i always spoke with steam about it you know how to do it better because i really didn't have so much experience actually with this kind of like MMO because the game is itself is not an MMO obviously but you know you can you can imagine right so it would actually it 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 raises question if you have kind of like a payment system like within the game on how to handle this um, on, on Steam if you have user generated content right you we are basically not using the Steam Workshop for this one we have our own Steam Workshop so this actually raises a number of questions um, but. Steam seems to be fine, you know, because of course for the actual payment, the actual, you know, dollar payment, uh, we're using their payment system then again, so I think this is fine, this is okay. Um, when it comes to the different platforms, yeah, we are still focused, so we still focus on PC. The game is definitely developed with a console and, and mobile in mind, by the way, so mobile, 
maybe I don't know in one or like one and a half years but I really like to use PC kind of like Roblox and kind of like Minecraft to really flesh out and really polish the game to make it as interesting as you know and as polished as possible and then slowly you know like releasing new features and you know giving some great you know new content updates and so yeah, I think you kind of like see where we are going right um, yeah, and I hope you're enjoying the game. So when it actually finally is then available, we will do some alpha and beta testing. Um, I was actually considering doing a Kickstarter, literally in particular for this kind of like, you know, alpha and beta testing. And well, then, then the marketing guys said, well, don't do, don't, don't do Kickstarter because of A and Z and B. And I was like, oh man, this is... Um, so, I mean, let's see about this, right? So this is really, I think, something that we have to see in the next months, uh, how the game feels. Uh, in the public and oh yeah yeah this is I think this is a good hint I was not showing as much of it the transportation system by the way and the cities um, this is actually something that I will cover in a new video so if you make it though so if you made it until here uh, this is definitely something very special and something pretty complex um, so what we are of course what we are trying to do with the game is you know we try to push uh, the survival genre um, quite a bit and at the same time to really open up this kind of user generated content uh, part to make it like as easy to use as possible because I'm actually not so satisfied how other games are sometimes doing it or they build a game and then you are enjoying the game and then all of a sudden it becomes like a huge problem you know to add your own stuff into the game and then you notice oh, okay the developer did not really had um, user generated content in mind which is okay you know for a lot of games like like all MMOs, I think, build like this. Um, so this is okay. Uh, it, of course, depends on the developer. But in our case, the user-generated content and the, the actual modding is really at the core of the game. This is no joke. And, you know, with the visuals that you have in place. And then let's see how this feels, right? I think the hope is that, you know, maybe after one or two years, um, the game will be awesome. <laughs> And uh, all the stress, you know, and all of those problems that we encountered during development would be, you know, would be, uh, would have been worth it. Um, yeah, so much from my side. I, I, I wish you a wonderful week and a wonderful day. And yeah, please stay tuned. Um, I will update more stuff until, uh, like, um, until the game's release in, as in summer. And then we see how it goes. Oh, by the way, we, yeah, as you can see here, we also have like, you know, like a lot of different characters. I think we didn't even activate many of the characters yet, but you know, they are, they are kind of like locked. There's, there's, there's kind of like an unlock system for them. But yeah, this is something that I will cover maybe in the future, you know, about you know, how, like what our heroes are and um, uh, how to unlock them and what are, what are the mechanics of, um, of those guys, yeah? All right, so, um, so much from my side. It was a pleasure. And then I'll um, talk to you soon.